Welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman, the podcast dedicated to helping you build the business of your dreams and live the life you always hoped for with valuable and fun tips and info to make your life easier and more fun. And now, here's your host, a man who sprinkles metal shavings on his breakfast cereal just for fun, Jason Silverman. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. I'm your host, Jason Silverman, and I'm thrilled to share some time with you once again today. As you know, I'm always on the hunt for interesting as well as super smart Real Deal guests. And I got to tell you, today's show is a winner. I want to introduce my listeners to somebody who's truly been there and done that, and I'm excited to pick her brain for your benefit today. So for the folks who I work with and if in any of my coaching programs or through Powerful Words Character Development or All-Star Cheer Sites or the Jason's Army Mastermind Group, you know how much I focus on the importance of being productive, right? Well, the show is going to help us to do just that. So today it's going to be my honor and privilege to share an amazing resource with you. You're going to love today's guest. She's got a ton of valuable information about a topic I consider really near and dear to my heart, especially considering all the conversations I get to have with owners out there on a regular basis. So I want you to strap yourself in. Today's show is going to be a blast. As I'm sure you already know, I'm committed to helping business owners just like you to become more successful, enjoy your career more, and in general, make your life significantly more fun. We only get one ride on this merry-go-round, folks. Let's make sure it's one hell of a ride, shall we? Alrighty, boys and girls, it is now that time. I want you to stop surfing Facebook, poo at your phone, your tablet, your dog, your cat, your spouse, your child, your significant other, anything that might possibly distract you from today's show. You're about to get some great and immediately implementable information, and I don't want you to miss even a second of it. So before we officially get going, let me give you a little bit of background about our special guest expert today. Phyllis Corky is the author of The Big Thing, How to Complete Your Creative Project, Even If You're a Lazy, Self-Doubting Procrastinator Like Me. It took her 40 years to write this book. Phyllis also works as an assignment editor for the Sunday business section of the New York Times and lives in Brooklyn with her cat, Foxy Brown. Before moving to New York, she lived in the Twin Cities and worked as an editor for the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Phyllis, welcome to The Real Deal. I'm thrilled to have you today. Thank you, Jason. Oh, fabulous. So before we officially get started, for those who haven't had the opportunity and pleasure of meeting you or, or reading your book yet, take a second, if you would, share your story with my listeners. What are you passionate about? What makes you tick? Who is Phyllis Corky? <laughs> well, uh, I would say I am passionate about uh, two main things, and one is words. I love words. I love reading, and I love writing. And I also have to say I'm passionate about sleeping because I really like napping, too. And those things don't necessarily go together, although reading in bed is really fun for me. So those, bring, those two things bring my two passions together. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, I, I, I got to ask, um, you know, I, I have the opportunity to speak to a ton of authors, um, which really... I feel like it elevates the conversation. Somebody who, who's got the, the depth of knowledge and the time that it takes to go through and write a book. Um, I would like to ask the question, you know, what motivated you to write this book? Well, it was the fact that I was in my 50s and I'd wanted to write a book since I was 11 years old. And I still hadn't done it. And I realized I had mortality staring me in the face thinking, I can't wait any longer because otherwise I'll be dead. And I thought, what can I do to motivate myself? Because I've been procrastinating on this for 40 years. So it ended up being a meta book, it really exploring that very topic. Why is it so hard to complete creative projects that are so important to you? Hmm. <laughs> well, so tell me this. I mean, I read this in your bio and it's been kind of like sticking in the back of my head. Um, are you really a lazy person? Because uh, well, lazy, lazy people don't write books. So, I, I mean, let, let, I, let, let, let's be honest here. Are you a lazy person or not? I I am. I, you know, lazy is a value judgment. I talk about this in the book. And it's it, obviously the subtitle is a little tongue in cheek. Uh, 
a lot tongue in cheek, I would say, because I'm, I'm not lazy when it comes to other people. If I'm accountable to others, I'm not lazy at all. I mean, obviously I have a job with the New York times. I couldn't have worked here for 15 years if I didn't get my work done. And when I have a deadline, especially, and I've got that, that gives me great energy to get things done. And if I'm going to disappoint others or let others down, I work very hard. But when it comes to my own projects, my, my own creative projects that don't have a deadline and where I'm not accountable to others, that's where I call myself lazy. I think that's fair. I think that's, I think that's fair for a lot of people. I mean, obviously the importance of a deadline, you know, as, as a marketing person, you know, we, we always talk about the importance of deadlines to get somebody to take action, you know, for a purchase or a sale. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's any different with actually getting something done, you know, without that yeah. deadline. I mean, well, right. you know, sometime is not a deadline. Right. right. And so that's why I talk in the book about the importance. If you have a project that doesn't have a deadline or no one is going to ask you for it, you have to create, build in maybe some fake accountability and, you know, get someone to um, sign on with your project like a friend. Or in my case, I actually uh, paid someone to call me every morning to work on my book. And that actually worked. Say, say more about that. So you basically had an accountability partner, right? Yes. Well, what I did was I put an ad on Craigslist under the gig section. And I said, I am trying to finish a book. I'm a really lazy person. I need someone to call me every day for a week at 7 a.m. and encourage me and hector me into working on the book and then call me again at 9 a.m. and make sure I actually did that. And I got <laughs> Got a whole bunch of responses to my ad. I was because I was going to pay him two hundred dollars, and you know that was actually really too high. But you know, I attract a lot of responses, and I ended up hiring of all people a dairy farmer in Washington State with uh, seven children, and she wrote me this really sweet email and said, "If you wouldn't mind a call from across the country, I'll just be getting up to milk my cows at that time. It'll be, it'll be." Uh, you know, or very early in the morning for me. And then I'll be, uh, when you're done, I'll, it's right before I'm getting ready to wake up my children. So she called me every day. And, uh, one day I did not want to get out of bed and I grumbled and I said, I don't feel like getting up. And she said, now we can't have that Phyllis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. And, uh, you know, I could hear her cows in the background and a rooster crowing, and it was pretty funny. I just couldn't let her down, so I got up and I wrote, started working on my book. Oh, I love that! What a, what what a great out of the out of the box thinking um, <laughs> opportunity you took there. I mean, that's... I mean, still, I would really encourage anyone to if you pay someone, you've got you know skin in the game. You you know you don't want to waste your money, especially business owners. I would think it would be able to identify that. Don't pay 200 though. You know, I think you could, could get someone for 50 or 100. I'm just going <laughs> to call you up and make you do it. I love that. I love that. We, I know with uh, with many of my coaching clients, we've got a uh, we've got an accountability system where um, it's it's a pretty cool system. You know, it's a it's a 30 minute call scheduled twice per week. Oh, excellent! Uh, and the way that works is, I get 15 minutes, you get 15 minutes to basically tell me what's going on, what I need to get done, what I did, and what I didn't get done. Um, That's great. And then it's not, hey, and tell me about your wife and your children and all that other stuff. It's okay. So I know that it, we call it a set and a get meeting. So we do them on Mondays and Fridays. So on Mondays, your set meeting. Here's what we're going to get done this week. And on Friday, it's this here's what I got done or I, what I didn't get done. And that's kind of the time where it's like, well, why didn't you do it? Yeah. And it just sometimes just uh, verbalizing and articulating those goals can go a long way towards getting them done. Because I think if you don't, sometimes they're just, they end up being very vague and you don't know exactly what it is you want to do. And you can't take those small steps to get to that, that final point. Totally makes sense. Totally, totally makes sense. Well, so on the same vein or in the same vein, you know, what steps do you suggest people take if they've been putting off a cherished, you know, creative project? Because I, I would assume that the creative projects, you know, always get moved to the back burner. They do. And I think some of that, first of all, you have to analyze why you want to do the creative project, because sometimes it's to feed your ego. 
And that's the wrong reason. If the main reason is to feed your ego or it's, you know, it's, it's feeding into some kind of narcissism that you have, it actually is better uh, for you not to do it, uh, you know, because then you don't have to confront the imperfections and the failures and the obstacles. So from the start, you have to decide that it's intrinsically worth doing regardless of the outcome. So I think understanding your motives are, are very important because really it's the, the process of doing it that should be the most important part. And that's how I felt with my book is that, you know, regardless of what the outcome of it would be or how many copies it sold, just the, just the process of doing it was worth it to me because I explored this issue. And that kind of helps with this, the second part is to accept that the fact that it may be a failure, that's a subjective term, but or may not meet your ultimate expectations. Uh, and, and that's okay. And that, a lot of people I think in, in, that you deal with probably are perfectionists. And that can really get in the way of, of even starting something. And so if you just go into it thinking this is going to be hard, it might not be perfect, it might even be a failure according to some subjective standard, but it's still worth doing because I want to see it through. And maybe it'll lead to something later that will be, you know, will be a success. So going into those, get into it with those kind of humble expectations, I think, can really go a long way to actually getting you to work and be productive on it. And the, and the third thing that I think is really important is to know that the hardest part is to start. You, and, you know, if you just get up and do it and get started and understand the value of the increments. Don't, you know, if, when it's big, it's, it's so overwhelming when you're, 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 you're thinking about the finish line already. And just really understand that starting and working in small increments will get you a long way. If you just work 20 minutes every day on something over a year, that adds up to a lot of time. I love that. The, that that's actually a brilliant. It's funny. I had this exact conversation with my, uh, with my daughter last night about this, about we we're talking about working on spelling words. Um, mm -hmm. you know, she's in second grade and it's like, you know, you only need to spend about 10 minutes a day. Well, no, no, I, I could spend a whole hour. Well, you could, but you're not going to get any more benefit from it. So, and you oh, probably, yeah. you probably won't do the whole hour. So, and then you're going to feel like you gave up. That's, I, I love this. Um, so would you tell somebody who is starting a project, you know, how do you get them to set the expectation that, that there is value in, in just that short, short burst of work? Well, I can point to research. I mean, there's, there's, uh, research that shows we can't really concentrate on one thing, uh, most of the time for more than 20 minutes. That, and then you have to get up and take a break. And our bodies want that. They need that break. So it's really, um, it's, it's really an illusion to think that you can work nonstop on something for hours and hours. And, and it's counterproductive to think that way. Totally makes sense. All right. I know that you've got in, uh, in, in your book, you've got a chapter on giving up. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you feel like is a sign that you should give up on a big personal project? Like, is there, I, I'm a, I'm a big sign guy. So like what, <laughs> what, what, what's flashing in your face that says, okay, now's the time to toss in the towel. Well, I'll give you an example of somebody in that chapter who, he was a, a software guy who worked for a big software company and he decided he wanted to quit his job and work on the next big software innovation. And he, so he, he just was at home trying to work on this thing and he realizes he's, he's, instead of working on his big new uh, software, a genius invention. He's work. He's watching. Um, Everybody loves Raymond Remons every day, and, <laughs> and he he had this epiphany. He thought, "Do I want to get up tomorrow and work on this?" And he and he said to himself, "No, I don't want to do this at all." And he just realized there was no fun in this whatsoever. But just to, to be okay. Some, all of these projects are going to be difficult and there's going to be times when they're, they're challenging and it's, you're not going to know what to do or what step to take. But, it, but if that's, if it's happening all the time that you really hate it, that is a huge sign that you should give up. Hmm. Well, yeah, cause it's just wasting time at that point, right? Yes. Yes. 
yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of wasting time. All right, it is time for our resource of the week. So, fellas, tell me this: How can my listeners find out more about you, where to get your book, um, and really how you're kind of changing the world one one page at a time? <laughs> well, my re, uh, my website is my name phyllisquirky dot com p h y l l i s k o r k k i dot com, and that shows all the places where my book is available and has some excerpts from some articles I've written for the New York Times and an excerpt from the book itself and some other resources. Fabulous. All right, folks, when you head over right after this podcast, don't don't, don't go anywhere yet. Um, right after this podcast, head on over to www.phyllisquirky.com. It's www.phyllisquirky.com. Head on over. You go grab that book. Um, you know, readers are learners. And if somebody actually takes the time to teach and share some of the some of the lessons they've learned, what a great investment. What a what a great way to step over the potholes you don't need to fall in. What a great way to really stand on somebody else's shoulders. So mm-hmm. go go grab that book and jump in. All right, so fellas, I always like to uh to end my podcast with what I consider to be a telling question. So if you could give business owners or really people in general just a solid piece of advice to either help their business or more importantly help them to live a better life, what would that piece of advice be? I would say forgive yourself. That is something that I think a lot of people who are very driven don't do. They see, they make a mistake or they don't they get up in the morning and they don't do what they intended to do. And I think people are really hard on themselves. I know uh, business owners I know are. I'm very hard on myself. And I think as long as you realize that there's power in increments and the hardest part is to start, you can get up the next day and you you can try again. And if you do that enough, you're going to succeed. Wise words. I love that. Phil, thank you so much for joining me today. I know how busy your schedule is, so it means the world to me that you share some time and some of your wisdom with us. This has been fabulous. Thank you, Jason. Uh, my pleasure. All right, folks, that is all the time we've got today. Thanks so much for tuning in to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. For more info about private coaching or to see if you'd benefit from one of my mastermind groups, visit me over at www.jasonmsilverman.com. I look forward to helping you achieve the success that you truly deserve. Until next time, let me leave you with this. Get out there and be the real deal. Set a goal, make a plan, work like hell towards it, and achieve the success that's waiting for you. Now's the time. Get out there and make it happen. This has been Jason Silverman, and I hope you have a spectacular week. You've been listening to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. To access the great resources mentioned in the show and for information on coaching and mastermind group opportunities with Jason, please visit jasonmsilverman.com.